thank you to join this conversation with us today uh, good afternoon sujatha and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be part of this conversation so can you tell us about the recent manufacturing developments at deepak fertilizers and how are they impacting the in- uh, industry so at deepak fertilizers we are uh, doing two three things that are uh, oriented towards our future uh, business goals first thing is that we are adding capacity and doing backward integration so that that's uh, part of our strategy grow our business size revenues so some pro- uh, important projects are going on uh, we have a new ammonia plant coming up we have a new uh, ammonium nitrate plant and wna weak nitric acid plant coming up in orissa and we are also planning some uh, expansion of uh, uh, nitric acid facilities this is a uh, uh, part of our uh, ongoing business second uh, level of uh, innovation uh, uh, is uh, how to deliver the higher value to our uh, Uh, and consumers so this is a second part of our strategy uh, where we uh, we are manufacturing the products uh, which are going to deliver let's say uh, for fertilizer segment if you take a uh, example like uh, common fertilizers like npks and uh, urea you know dap uh, they are for a general application but mm-hmm. we have we have developed products which are going for specific applications like onion uh, sugar cane or uh, corn or uh, grapes or so different uh, crops and then they are specifically designed for that crop mm-hmm. and these products uh, give a, a 10 to 15% higher yield uh, to the farmer and uh, <clears throat> compared to if he is using the standard uh, fertilizers so uh, this is a, a great value addition for uh, for the farmer as well as uh, for us because the farmers uh, what we have seen are willing to pay a premium on the product which gives them higher productivity and higher return on their their assets so this is uh, one thing and similarly in other products like uh, nitric acid uh, we are getting into specialty nitric acids very ultra pure uh, nitric acid for electronics uh, industry or uh, some specialty steel industry where uh, they require a specific uh, level of uh, purity and uh, that gives them significant advantage in their business process so what we are uh, looking at is a deeper partnership with our uh, end consumers and develop products that uh, uh, give them a benefit uh, which uh, our competitors uh, cannot offer mm-hmm. so this is uh, getting into the application development and getting into new technology uh, innovations at, at our end the okay. third uh, very, yeah and third very important area for us is uh, sustainability and uh, we are looking at uh, reducing our uh, environmental impact in different uh, ways of uh, let's say uh, energy con- uh, consumption reduction uh, renewable energy use water consumption reduction reducing our emissions to atmosphere and also developing products which uh, as i said before that uh, the same amount of product being used compared to the conventional product will give a, a delta improvement on the productivity or application so that uh, the ultimate usage of that product will reduce so th- these are some of the uh, uh, big ideas that we have been working on and uh, this is the uh, this is something new and we are very excited to develop these uh, processes and technologies okay you 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 spoke about some of the sustainability initiatives that your organization is using to reduce the environmental impact so uh, could you please elaborate a little bit more on this initiatives Yes, yeah, so on sustainability, there like we defined some some of our targets, uh, and these are going to be published uh, very soon in the public uh, domain. Uh, we are uh, producing our first uh, sustainability report, which will be available uh, in June, month of June. So this will give us our uh, roadmap for next five years, what all we are trying to do, and some of the big uh, ticket items where we are uh, working very aggressively are uh, uh, first is the GHG emission reduction. which is of course like everybody is talking about it but we have taken a very aggressive target of 30% reduction in next 5 years mm-hmm. from where we are today so this is uh, quite an aggressive target compared to uh, let's say people are taking long range longer range target 10 year 20 years mm-hmm. uh, we are planning to do that in uh, uh, only 5 years time so we already uh, started to use uh, renewable energy in the last couple of years and we are going to expand that and in addition to that we are reducing our emission actual emissions to the atmosphere mm-hmm. so this is one uh, one uh, big uh, high uh, important uh, um, uh, high priority project second uh, is the water uh, so water uh, we have been working on the water consumption reduction since uh, 
last several years. And this year and particularly uh, in the last uh, two years, we have made a lot of progress in that area. So we have uh, been able to increase our production and reduce our water consumption. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to reduce our effluents uh, discharge to the tune of uh, around 20 to 25 percent already. So our okay. target is to reduce it further to another 20 uh, percent. So we will be uh, going to 50 percent of where we were two years before uh, mm -hmm. in the in this uh, financial year. And then subsequent year we are planning to go for uh, zero liquid discharge. And in addition to that, we are also uh, uh, doing some uh, water storage uh, facilities where we can store the water. And also uh, in uh, our Gujarat plant, we we have invested uh, with the government into desalination plants where uh, the river water can be spared for the domestic consumption. And uh, for the industrial use, we will get the uh, uh, seawater. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in Taloja, uh, we have just uh, concluded a discussion with the, uh, the local authorities, uh, ministry, as well as the Sitco and Municipality Water Corporation. For uh, in principle, uh, there's a MOU now signed for uh, establishing a water treatment facility which will uh, reprocess the STP water and uh, produce the industrial uh, grade water. So again, here the same philosophy that uh, whatever is going as a waste to the sea, uh, we will get it back and use it as a uh, let's say recycled water rather than consuming the fresh water. So a lot of work is going on in the water area. Mm -hmm. Similarly, yeah, the other initiatives are there like waste reduction and energy reduction. So many initiatives are on that area also. Uh, try to recycle all the waste that we generate at our sites into a usable product. So okay. that is another area we are working on uh, for the circular uh, business model, you know, where uh, different types of waste that are generated are used within. So we have already made a lot of progress in that area. And uh, almost 80 to 90 percent of our waste generated in uh, our bigger sites are already recycled and reused in our own processes. So what are the main challenges that you have faced by the chemical and the fertilizer industries? And how is Deepak Fertilizer addressing these challenges? In chemical industry and fertilizer industry, uh, especially our segment, so we are dependent on uh, natural gas in a mm -hmm. large way because many of the products are made from natural gas and mm -hmm. uh, the fuel pricing and second at the so this is at the uh, raw materials and in the finished product uh, area especially fertilizer industries the pricing is controlled by government and subsidy is also uh, controlled by government so mm -hmm. the subsidy uncertainty is al already uh, creating a lot of problem for the industry whereas uh, you know uh, the especially in the last year the international prices of all the raw materials have gone through the roof because of the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, uh, many of our products, uh, uh, we could not pass on the cost and the subsidy was not enough to cover the cost of the uh, products. So uh, these are some of the challenges uh, uh, that the industry faced today. Going to, let's say, if you look at the longer term, probably India is uh, not uh, very well, uh, you know, resourced in natural gas, crude. Uh, we have a huge uh, import uh, of uh, energy. So uh, we are looking forward for solutions like uh, green hydrogen, green ammonia. So these type of uh, uh, products can help us uh, reduce our dependence on uh, import of the uh, energy. And uh, as a country, we, be, we become more uh, reliant on our own, our own resources. So this is one area that uh, I think aggressively the government also needs to push <coughs> and industry has to play its own part moving uh, towards our uh, independence in that area. So this will uh, help uh, the local industries quite a lot, especially if the government uh, gives us uh, uh, some, let's say PLI for chemicals and fertilizer sectors are still not uh, there, whereas other industries are uh, getting the PLI uh, benefits. So some uh, benefits in that <clears throat> that area can really help us to uh, solve uh, solve some of these challenges that we face today. OK, so can you discuss any innovative solutions that have been implemented by our DFPCL to maintain a competitive edge in the industry? Yeah, definitely like uh, uh, we had uh, been continuously working on uh, uh, two areas. One is like upgrading our technology that is uh, existing in our plants. And uh, second is uh, developing a new solution. So as I mentioned before that uh, last uh, year, we launched uh, uh, products for uh, crop specific uh, 
nutrients. What we say is the complete solution. Mm -hmm. So the farmer like normally use uh, buys uh, urea, DAP, NPK, potash, zinc, sulfur separately. And then depending on the his understanding, he is uh, applying that in the field. What we provide him solution now is a one stop shop that he, he buys only one product and then he applies it to that particular crop. So it's very customized towards the crop and the, the soil quality uh, which is there in that uh, that area. <clears throat> and it helps uh, helps him to deliver a better uh, productivity from, mm -hmm. from that area. So that is uh, an, uh, one innovation on the product side. On the manufacturing technology side, again, to support that, uh, we have to develop the process, do our research on, uh, on the product formulation and also how to produce that material. In a way that uh, you know the the nutrients are supplied to the plant at the time when it is needed. So that that's uh, one innovation. Second, uh, we are also working on smart technologies in our manufacturing sector. Uh, some some of the latest uh, uh, technologies that are coming up for automation of uh, uh, supply chain, uh, real time information from the plant for decision making, and uh, also for uh, uh, now we are also working on some of the. Uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning tools where uh, we can manage our uh, process in a better way like uh, some productive technologies for plant reliability the technologies which can help us deliver a better efficiency in the plant so a lot of uh, uh, innovations are uh, going into that direction where uh, we are looking at uh, we have already implemented some of these tools and we are also looking at uh, 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 continuously upgrading our uh, uh, technology area like uh, fleet management, GPS uh, based real time fleet fleet mm -hmm. management to improve the efficiency of the uh, logistics uh, is another area because a lot of uh, our material is uh, bulk material where transportation happens. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, another area for improvement. Similarly, like capturing the customer requirements on the real time basis and uh, on time supply fulfillment. So this is another area that uh, where we are getting into a lot of the latest technologies and implementing those solutions for improving our uh, delivery performance to the customers. OK, you spoke about the digital transformation that uh, DFPCL is into. So could you tell us how uh, what were the challenges that you faced when you are uh, going from the traditional to the automation side? The two, three key uh, steps. First is that like we need to identify what are the need of the person who is working at the shop floor level. So if we are not able to capture that properly and we force a solution which may not uh, solve this problem. So that is the first area that how can we identify the, the real need that will help improve the productivity of our machines or productivity of our men, uh, human resources. So if we are not capturing that uh, in a proper way, so a lot of uh, time is uh, spent on uh, identifying those needs and then uh, based on those needs, uh, the solutions have to be uh, generated and solutions have to be practical so that people find it uh, easy to use and adaptation. So that that's another barrier to change that uh, change management of uh, moving from a uh, traditional way of working to new way of working and using the uh, digital tools instead of, let's say, maintaining the field log books and taking the readings in the field. And uh, we are used to, uh, let's say, maintaining our equipment in a certain way using the formation that is coming from already a level of automation is there like DCS and PLCs, and uh, but we are going for a next level of automation. So uh, the mindset change. And second is uh, availability of the trained resources because sometimes we may have a situation that you know you know what uh, what is to be done, but you don't have a, a right set of uh, people or a right skill set in your organization to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So how do we uh, resource this change? Because this uh, this resources would be required for a certain let's say one year or two year for the project lifetime. So resourcing of these changes uh, is also very important. And sometimes uh, like uh, when we do a business case, you know, so this. Uh, uh, latest uh, innovations technologies may not uh, deliver a immediate ROI because uh, in a traditional business decision, when we make an investment, then we look at okay, what is the return on the investment? But uh, some some returns are tangible and some returns are not tangible and then not immediately realizable. So uh, we have to look at the longer term uh, how we are building the competitive strength 
in the industry uh, using this innovation and uh, tools. So I think these are some of the challenges that we uh, we have discussed and we have taken decisions to move away in many, many certain cases, looking at the barriers and looking at the challenges. And then we, we also did this, uh, what we call as a cross-functional team formation. So we have uh, people from different teams who look at all the aspects of the change and then they put together a uh, plan that how these things will be implemented and then help in the implementation of uh, these technologies. So you upskill your uh, your workforce, is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, so that is uh, very important because uh, what we are seeing is that uh, in a traditional hierarchy driven organization, a lot of uh, decision making happens at the top level. When when the companies become becoming bigger, like in Deepak Fertilizers, we are growing uh, quite uh, significantly in the last uh, three to four years. And uh, we need to decentralize and uh, delegate more. So in that case, like our uh, middle management, senior management team uh, have, has to be more independent. They have to have more uh, decision making power as well as uh, they uh, they need to also uh, have a higher level of uh, authority for taking those decisions. So for that purpose, like we are, we have initiated a lot of uh, programs where uh, the skilling is happening at the shop floor level, at the junior management level, at the senior management level. And uh, we are also putting together a lot of programs like uh, Six Sigma tra training, TPM, quality circles, systems, reliability centered maintenance. So risk based management. So these systems like uh, we're already there in some form. Now some of these systems have also changed over a period of time. So we have again uh, in the process of re-implementation of all these systems. In the view, uh, with a special view that uh, the ownership of these uh, running these systems will move to the shop floor itself. So uh, the shop floor will be owning the whole process. They will be taking decision. They will be running their own show, and they will lead uh, need a little uh, supervision or support from the uh, senior management team. So the idea is to delegate more. Uh, uh, smaller uh, units can take their own decision, and for that uh, we need to do all like functional and leadership skills uh, training uh, at every level. So what is uh, DFPCL's outlook for the future in terms of growth and expansion? And how do you see Deepak Fertilizer positioning itself to thrive in the future? So as, as I mentioned in the beginning that uh, the three key areas, one is like uh, capacity improvement. So we are investing in a new ammonia plant of 1500 TPD, which is the uh, under commissioning now, so we are expecting the commissioning to be over in uh, uh, in May. In addition to that, now we are building a new facility in Gopalpur in Orissa, where uh, ammonium nitrate and uh, a large WNA weak nitric acid plant will come up. Uh, it, it's going to be commissioned in, in the end of 2024. So uh, these are the two large capex investment, and after that we are we already have a plan for further investment in our uh, capacities. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the uh, one way. So continuously, we need to keep investing so that uh, on the volume side, uh, we keep growing. Second area of our uh, strategy is to do more of specialty product, moving from commodity to specialty, and then in that process, uh, improve the profitability of the business as well as deliver higher value to our end, end consumer. So that uh, that effort is also on. So once uh, at one place we are growing growing in the value uh, volume and also we are uh, increasing the value of our products. So it's a dual strategy that we have the benefit of uh, both value as well as uh, volume. And at the same time, like uh, we also want to provide a differentiated uh, experience to our consumers and consumers of our products. So this will also uh, enable us to ensure that our market share is uh, protected because uh, these type of uh, products and services are not uh, usually supplied by the industry. We are uh, looking at the pain points of our end consumers and trying to address specific issues so that they can do better in their own uh, businesses or their own uh, uh, endeavors. So th these are the two main strategies uh, with that we are uh, building of uh, building for the growth of the business. So how important is R&D for uh, DFPCL and uh... Uh, what step has the company taken to foster innovation and develop new products? Yeah, so I think uh, as I said that uh, all our current uh, effort is going into moving from commodity to speciality. And what that, that means is that we have to get into a lot of R&D. We have to develop these products which, uh, which 
addresses the needs of the end consumer in a very uh, special way, a specific way. So develop these uh, products which uh, which can actually deliver the higher value, and then only the customer will be willing to pay a premium on that product. So that is that requires a huge uh, R and D setup. So uh, last year we have created uh, two new uh, uh, structures in our organogram. So one of these structure is uh, called center of excellence. So in center of excellence, we have two verticals. One is looking at the technologies and one is looking at the engineering. So the idea is to uh, absorb and adopt all the latest technologies and improve the uh, the asset productivity of our existing uh, process. Mm -hmm. Then another uh, uh, structure that we have uh, now implemented is, is the new product development organization. So the new product development organization continuously works on uh, developing new products uh, for a specific requirement of our uh, consumers uh, in the adjacent se uh, sectors like uh, like we are in the uh, industrial chemicals, for example, or we are in the mining uh, chemicals and we are also uh, working on the fertilizer side. So you know, in each uh, of these three sectors, what are the specialty products that uh, uh, that can be developed where uh, we can find a market and uh, especially like uh, the government is also looking at make in India program. So uh, which are the products that are being imported into the country and some of these products if we can make locally, then uh, that will be also addressed. So uh, this requires a uh, huge uh, infrastructure for uh, uh, technology, engineering and uh, R&D and that uh, we are investing in those uh, those areas. So uh, you also mentioned about how you are optimizing the supply chain to ensure the timely delivery of products to the customers. So what are the steps taken that uh, or what are the strategies that you have implemented? The two uh, parts of the logistics, one is like uh, raw materials and then second is uh, related to finished products uh, reaching our cons uh, end consumers in time and uh, in both sides, like we have uh, deployed two, three very important tools, what we call as a like some programs, uh, Galaxy and Gobold, uh, which are uh, the project names. Basically, what uh, what they do is like uh, they enable us to track the real time uh, performance of our uh, logistics uh, operations. So where the raw materials are moving, how the raw materials are getting delivered, are we, uh, let's say, having a uh, transit time of four four hours. So is it uh, coming in four hours or it is taking more time? This data and the analytics of this data is uh, being uh, captured. And then wherever these improvements are possible, we are trying to uh, work out the solutions. And uh, on the finished product side, uh, like right from capturing of the orders in the system and then uh, predicting that, OK, suppose we take the order, then at what time the customer should expect the delivery of the material? And uh, complete management of that uh, order process is uh, uh, being uh, uh, mapped into the system and then it is tracked and uh, making sure that, uh, you know, uh, on time delivery of the product to uh, like uh, to the promises happening. Or, uh, and then uh, this this is an important matrix for us, because if we are uh, promising that, OK, your material will be ready in 30 days time or three weeks time. Then the customer must uh, get that uh, material within that uh, time. You know, mm -hmm. so this is uh, these are the tools uh, like uh, they these are going to use in in the beginning. They are all based on the logics, and uh, in in the next uh, step, we are also going to use the artificial intelligence and machine learning process to make them smarter. Mm -hmm. Same way, like our uh, spares ma inventory management program. So based on the consumption data for last uh, several years. There'll be a predictive program which will uh, create the orders for what spare parts are required uh, at what frequency and uh, uh, what is the delivery time consumption pattern. So based on those uh, things, the these decision making tools are uh, helping us to optimize our uh, ordering of these uh, parts and uh, also working capital optimization. The inventory that we must maintain at the plant to keep the plant running smoothly. Thanks, Mughal. Thanks for your time and thank you for giving us all insights, uh, all these insights on what Deepak fertilizers are doing in this uh, competitive environment to stay relevant and to stay competitive. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sujata. And it's a pleasure as always uh, talking to you. Yeah.